There's quite a few seats down here in the front row. If you got, if anybody's looking for seats, right here is four, three. Okay, so let's please you give can, can a there. warm welcome to Wayne Stambaugh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, just, I'd like to start out by saying thank you for everybody for attending. It's great to be back at a live FOSDEM again. This is the first time I've been back since 2020, pre-COVID, so it's great to get out in front of uh, the KeyCAD user base and get to talk to people. If you didn't show up at the booth yesterday, uh, it was a lot of fun. We, had, we sold all our uh, swag out much faster than we thought we would, and all the stickers were gone before lunchtime. So hopefully next year now we know we'll bring a little bit more with us. Um, so a lot, there's a lot to talk about. I, I'm gonna, I know some of this is going to be kind of fast. I'm going to get through it quick, but because there's, there's been quite so many changes that are going to happen in the upcoming version 8, I'm just going to blow through them. The uh, talk slides are available online. There's some animations in them that I'm not going to have time to let play all the way through. So if you are curious about how some of the new features work and how you access them, you can just download the, my talk and, and, look, and then play through it on your own. So let's talk about what's going on. I'm only going to talk about what's happened in the last year because it would be too much to go all the way back to 2020. Unfortunately, the... <laughs> The, that first line should have said KeyCAD 8 was already a release. Well, we, we ran into a few issues. We're going to have to spin an RC3 here probably in the next day or so. Um, I, w I expect 8 to be released with some time in the middle of February at the latest. Um, fingers crossed, but I think we're pretty close. Um, last year when we ran the version 8, end of year campaign, we raised over $200,000 in donations and donation matches from other companies. Um, so that was really, really a successful donation campaign and that's allowed us to pay developers to continue to contribute to KeyCAD. So all these new features that um, are in KeyCAD and V8 and then moving forward you, is it, uh, largely in part due to those, having those funds available to you know, help our t pay our team to continue to contribute. And that's been really, uh, beneficial. We had our first conference since the original one in 2019 in Chicago. Uh, there was a KeyCon Europe this year in Acarunia, Spain. Uh, for those of you who didn't get to attend, it was, it, was a small, it was a much smaller, more subdued event, but it was uh, really well done and I think everybody had a good time. Interestingly enough, spun out of that, uh, there's a company called Watch You Next PCB who is one of our uh, uh, platinum sponsors. They also decided to throw a kind of an impromptu KeyCon Asia. And so we, Seth and I were in Shenzhen in, in November for the uh, first ever KeyCon Asia. So uh, what else is going on in the team? So in the last year, we've added three new lead developers. Um, uh, Watch you next PCB, who sponsored the uh, KeyCon Asia uh, event. They actually have hired people to work full-time on KeyCAD. There's one full-time uh, individual now. Once we release eight, we'll probably, he'll probably be the next mem member of the lead, lead, lead development team. They also hired a second person that he's bringing online and getting him used to the KeyCAD code. So now we're going to have some additional resources that help the project. Um, the biggest improvement, though, has been in the library team. So the library team has grown tremendously. For a long time, that's one of, we had this huge backlog of symbol footprint 3D model libraries that kind of we're getting stale because the people who were running the library way back either changed jobs or you know they had to go do something else. Life get life got in the way. But in the so in the last year we've added six new members to the library team and there's been a eight now is it eight? Sorry, I probably didn't update it. But it, there's been a huge amount of backlog. Um, I'll go through the statistics at the end here just to show you how much that's improved. Um, we actually have a technical writer now. We have a one individual who spends a lot of time, uh, just all he does, he's like our, you know, they always say there's no I in team for Graham. He's, he is the one man, he is truly a one man team. So we, our, our library docs don't lag, as, or our KeyCAD documentation does not lag as much as it used to. It used to be the documentation always lagged quite a bit. For version eight, it's gonna be relatively up to date. Um, there'll be a few things that are missing. Um, one of the other things that was interesting is uh, Worth Electronic uh, out of Germany had contacted me about 
providing uh, their footprint and symbol in 3D model libraries to KiCad. And so they've been slowly starting to online and contribute stuff. And their goal is to um, get their entire product line in, in the stock KiCad libraries. So at some point, it's quite a, I mean, that's a big company and there's quite a few parts. So you know, thank you to them for stepping up and you know, documenting their, basically providing their own symbols and footprint li and 3D model libraries for KiCad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that's interesting, and we'll talk about. I'll also talk about this in the statistics part. Is um, you know, in 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 U.S. and in Europe, we have quite a bit of market share. We we actually have a very large presence. But in Asia, we've kind of lagged behind. But in the last year, if we're, we're looking at the download numbers. Asia's really starting to ramp up now, and you know that's a really big market. So it's neat to see KiCad getting. Um, in, in, in making penetration in that market. And I think one of the main reasons, especially in China, is we now actually have quite a few people who are full-time either translating the application, translating the documentation. So they have really good native language support for KiCad. So that's, that's really, I think that's what's helped. Um, we now have five Platinum sponsors, and if you're not aware, Platinum in KiCad is 15,000 a year or more. So we now have five of those. And I know it's a little limited right now, but the KiCad store is open. So if you want to get some KiCad swag, um, there's not a lot of uh, items there yet. But as time goes on, we will add more and more items to the KiCad store. So head to uh, store.keycad.org and um, check out, get your latest uh, KiCad swag. And, of course, we always like to give a little love to our platinum sponsors. I see Felix is around here somewhere. Um, Eisler. The, the newest sponsor is DAI, and they're a uh, consulting firm. Uh, they were, they're our latest uh, sponsor, uh, platinum sponsor. DigiKey and Wachu NextPCB, so Wachu is the parent company of NextPCB. Uh, some of you are familiar with them. They're a PCB and PCBA uh, manufacturer. And, of course, KiCad Services Corporation, whose goal is to continue to support the KiCad project from the commercial side and everything flows down from there into KiCad proper, which so we all get to benefit from. So what, what did we add in version 8? So there's a lot of things that happened in version 8 that are, that, are, um, gonna, that, you're, that are not in version 7. So we made a bunch of SVG uh, exporter improvements. So some of the primitives used to export as line segments. It now it exports as its own primitive. Um, there's now a startup splash screen, but that's been disabled, so more about that later. But it's there for like, like rebranding. If somebody wanted to make their own variant of KiCad and wanted to put their own little splash screen up there, they can do that. There's now, oh, oh it's slow. Um, ah, it went too far. Page up. Come on, laptop. There we go. So there's now older the hotkeys, so here you can see the animation playing. You can assign multiple hotkeys now to a single single uh, action. We have in, we have ARM64 builds. So for those of you who are running Windows on, on, on ARM64s, we now have uh, binaries, data binaries for you guys. Uh, one of the big contributions. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, one of the major contributions this, this year was there's now an easy EDA, easy EDA project importer. So your easy EDA and easy EDA Pro. Projects will import directly into KiCad. The whole project, schematic, everything. So that was a nice contribution. Um, ER, so the, we, in, we introduced the command line interface in version 7, but it, there were bits and pieces of it were missing. So now you can run DRC and ERC from the command line. So if you want to do like a CI tool, so every time somebody commits a change, you run the ERC or DRC, make sure it's clean. And if it's not, you know, you can automatically ping somebody, hey, you broke this, you broke that. So that's going to be invert that'll be available in version eight. Yeah, we all like those CI tools, you know, keep people on their toes. Here so here's something that's interesting that happened this year. So one of our um, this is one of the things that KeyCat Services did was there was a customer who needed this for their um, uh, they this was a request, so they paid us directly to integrate this into KiCad, so everybody gets get support in KiCad now. Um, it's not a, it's not everything in, is supported in, in Git, but most of the base, you know, 
the basic things that you would need to keep track of version control of your designs is now built into KeyCAD. So the property panels uh, on 7, it was only available in the uh, board editor. It's now available in all editors. So the schematic and the symbol editor and the footprint editor now have the little panel. You select the object. You get the, you have the panel up. You can, you can modify your object properties without having to open, a do, open and close a dialog. Here's another. Oh, come on. You can do it. I know you can do it. There you go. Um, here's another one. Um, so we have customers that do really complex designs, and they requested this. So they have, um, when you highlight a, a net, sometimes it's so complicated in order for you to find where on the design where everything goes. If you have a deeply nested hierarchy, it's cumbersome because you've got to walk down, walk up and down the, the hierarchy stack. There's now a navigator, so when you highlight the net, there's a navigator that allows you see all the elements that are connected to that net in the bar on the left. Click on it, opens the sheet, takes you to that element directly. So for if you do really complex designs, it's a time saver. That was also paid for by somebody else. This wasn't something that was even on our radar. It was just something that, 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 a, that a paying customer requested. They paid for it. goes into KeyCAD. We all win. So. So there's now search panels on all the uh, editors. So you, there's a global search panel which allows you to search for all kinds of different objects. You click on it, it takes you to that object in the in the view. Instead of the old find dialog, this is a lot more convenient. It's a little bit more you can a little more useful. You can see what's available. Um, so there's now an internal bomb tool. So <laughs> in version eight, you no longer have to generate your bombs using a script. Uh, in the past, we always scripted it out because everybody had these, you know, everybody would argue about what a good bomb is, right? So we provided a tool. It's, it's obviously not as flexible as the scripting is, but if you just want to export a simple bomb, there's now a tool for that built into KeyCAD. Um, so we also have contextual object grid alignment. So you know how sometimes... You know, you want the pins on 50 mil grids, you want your text to be on 25 mil grids. You can set it up contextually, and when you're using that object, it will automatically pick, pick that grid spacing. So instead of you having to constantly change grids back and forth when you're, you know, connecting pins versus, like, moving your text around to get them all nice and lined up pretty, there's a tool that handles that automatically for you. You don't have to do it. There's now nested symbol inheritance, so you can now, instead of... In version 7, the, the, nest, the derivation level is 1. Now the devil, der, derivation level is infinite. So you can create sub you know, subgroups of subgroups of subgroups, and you can stack. So you don't have to keep redefining the same, lab, the same fields over and over again. You can, you can define a set of fields and then build something on top of that, the symbol on top of that, symbol on top of that. So that was, that's available in um, V8. Yeah, this is, this is a pretty big... Uh, there's now a tool to check for diffs, so against the uh, library. So you're working in your schematic, you don't know um, if there's a different, you know, there's a, it allows you to see a diff. So you, you say you run an ERC and you say there's a diff, you get a diff error or a diff warning that, that your symbol doesn't match what was in, was in the library. There's a tool now that will show you what the difference between the two objects were. So you can decide whether you want to pull in the change from the library or just ignore it. Okay, so there's, um, we now, you can now directly import CAD, Altium, CADSTAR, and Eagle Symbol libraries directly in KeyCAD like you could do some, you know, some of the other ones. Instead of having to, like, convert them and then, and then bring them in as KeyCAD libraries, you now can just bring them in directly. There's a preview. Is, is it going to show up? Yeah. So there's now a, a previewer for the library. So as you hover over, mouse hover over them, instead of having to click it and see it in the editor, you can now just hover and say, oh, yep, that's the one I want. Just some handy convenience features. There's now a library file. I don't recommend anybody doing this. This is just for demonstration purposes. Here on my hand editing uh, a, a symbol library file, and if you watch in the, it's updating, it, we, we now watch all the files in both the symbol and footprint libraries, 
and if you if they change, it will tell you so you don't save over top of existing changes. Like say somebody say you got two people working on the same library at the same time, one of you is going to get a hey, <laughs> you're going to overwrite somebody else's changes. So we Im implemented that. Um, we now have a, a simple single button now. Let's say you have a bunch of uh, libraries that you've imported from Altium or Eagle or wherever. With one button now, you can just save those as KiCad libraries. Because one thing we can't do is we don't write anybody's proprietary formats. So we just, we, it's a read-only library. But, so, but if you want to edit them in KiCad, you just save them as KiCad libraries and go on about your work. We now have differential cursors in the um, si simulation or the simulator. There was quite a few changes in the simulators that much improved. So you you know there's a lot of LT spice like features that people are used to having in a spice simulator. Oh come on. We can now directly import LT spice schematics. There's a caveat with that. You have to have LT spice installed because it goes because it needs to go back into LT spice installation and get all the LT spice symbols. So if you want to do this in order for it to work correctly, you do have to have LT Spice installed on your. You just can't take your LT Spice circuit and then import it without being able to import the rest of LT Spice because it references L, its own internal stuff in LT Spice, and we have to extract all that out to make a simulation. But it works very well. And I mentioned earlier. We got a bunch of spice simulator improvements. We have FS, FFTs. Uh, this is a, this is a really bad oscillator here. It's always fun fun to make. You can see you should only see that one spike there at the beginning and none of the other ones in a perfect oscillator. But I did this one just for fun because um, I know how to make bad ones. I'm experienced at that. Um, uh, and S parameters and Fourier. So like most of the features that have been available in NG Spice that we just haven't extracted out that information that we haven't extracted out in the simulations is now available. Um, one, of the, one of the more requested features, come on, you can do it, there you go, is uh, editable power symbols. So in, before in KiCad, if you want to create a new a, a custom voltage, you had to go into the symbol editor, copy, uh, and then change it. You can now do it on the fly right, right from the schematic editor without having to create a new symbol. We we, we vastly improved the importers for SVG and DXF. Or I'm sorry, we now actually have SVG and DXF importing into this schematic editor. It was only in the board editor and the footprint editor, I think, before, but now it go, it's now in the symbol and schematic editors. We, we can export to Cadence Allegro PCB Designer. So for those of you who don't want to use our board layout package, you can now export the netlist to Cadence. And we've switched over, so a long time ago we switched the board, or the board editor printing in Cairo, which can do things like alpha blending, which is kind of more important for the board editor. But we've also switched over just recently in the schematic editor. So like if you have bitmaps with alpha, instead of being no alpha, they'll be, they'll be printed with alpha blending. Okay, that's it for the schematic editor. So it got the bulk of the love for version 8, but there were still a lot of changes in the board editor. So we have the same tool that we have in the schematic editor to check footprints against the board in the library. And you can get a visual diff. You get a visual diff if, just to see what the difference is and if, before you accept any changes. You can now import... Come on. Yeah, you can now import, directly import Altium footprint libraries. Um, before, we didn't. You had to like save the 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 Altium board importer would import them and automatically convert them to uh, KiCad formats. Now you can just import the library as it is. SolidWorks PCB files. We now do that wasn't fairly easy because they're basically Altium PCB files. But we now we now we can now import SolidWorks PCB files. There's a do not position flat. Flag uh, DMP for the uh, footprint or the board editor now, so that when you export your uh, position files, it won't export those if they're things that you don't want your pick and place machine to, you know, try populate. We now allow uh, connectivity on any random shape, so you can draw a shape on copper, any shape you want. 
sign a net to it, it becomes it becomes a trace or another connect a net or a zone. But it, you can basically draw any arbitrary shape and, and give it a net name. We've we've added uh, some major improvements to the interactive meander tuning. Here's the new properties dialog that allows you to set the parameters when you're doing your meander tuning. There are a bunch of step export improvements, including if you really want to have ridiculously large um, step files, you can actually export the pads and the traces and the vias. And your, your step files will be gigantic, I mean, but you can do it now. That was a feature that people requested, but be prepared, you're going to have some big step files. Um, so property panels, again, is now in the footprint editor. You can see down there, I click on an object, I get the properties, I can just edit them in the properties editor. Um, there's, we also have the preview, the hover pre flyover preview in the, in, the, in the footprint editor as well. Here's a recent, we now export to IPC 2581. So um, I know this isn't supported by a lot of manufacturers yet, but we're now in a position where when it becomes more, well, more widely supported, we'll already have it in KiCad. And there was a whole host of 3D viewer improvements, things like visibility panels, so you can turn layers on and off, and you can, there's a bunch of other stuff in, in the 3D viewer that were massively improved. So uh, I'd like to thank Roberto because I shamelessly stole this from his presentation at, at KeyCon. This is a matrix of the, the changes, and so everything in blue was, was the importer. These were the importers for third-party tools. Um, everything in blue was in seven. The orange is now included in eight. We have a few gaps. We got Gita import and uh, PCAD, uh, but we and we still need to do the project support for Altium. So right now you have to import the schematic, the board, sync them up together so that KeyCAD's happy. But I, it, I think in eight and nine, that's we're going to have project support for the Altium. So here's, an, here's some fun statistics. So the source repo it had four, so between now and version 7, the source repo, and it's actually more than that now, had 4,500 commits by 15 different authors. Currently, KeyCAD sits at 1.63 million lines of code without translations and another 176K lines of comments. So we're rapidly approaching 2 million lines of code. Um, yep. Uh, the, the, the library team has just been busy, and in, in the last year, we've added 1,207 new symbols for a total of 20,000, 2023. I'm sure it's more since I've wrote, made this. He's, Clemens down here shaking his head. Um, footprint library, we added 713 for a total of 13,454. And just to give you an idea how significant that number is, I was informed this morning that one of our, uh, one, one large well-known um, uh, component distributor doesn't have that many, doesn't have that many footprints. We actually supply more footprints than some of the distributors do. So I'm not at liberty. I, I don't think I, I don't have the, I don't know if I have the permission to say who it is. So I'm just going to say it, just throw that out there. But it just shows you how massively improved the KeyCAD libraries are. We added 238 3D models for a total of 6,700. We did slip a little bit in our language translation. So for V7, we had 17 languages that were 99% translated. We only have nine for V8 release, but I'm hoping that situation will improve as V8 gets out there. So we, we saw it. I don't know if, how many people saw this, but uh, Felix and Eisler posted uh, KiCad usage. And this is actually, there's, shows the growth from um, 2020 to now. And in 2020, I think we were roughly in the mid-20% of their orders were KeyCAD. And we've continually grown to now we're 42. But I've heard recently somebody say something like 50% in the last month. So you see all the other EDA tools going down, KeyCAD's going up. So that's a nice trend. I like that trend. And, and, and it's not, Osh, Park, Osh Park also sh sh demonstrates similar kind of trends. You know, they're, they're seeing KeyCAD usage go up in, in, from their customers. So. Now, that's not universally true. There's other board vendors, I'm sure, that have different statistics. But most of the board vendors that we, inter we interface with directly, they're seeing those kind of numbers. So that's really So I'm going to blow through this quickly. Um, I apologize for not being, having a lot more time. But 
So we have, um, here's what's coming in V9. So we're, we're going to have IPC support for um, internal procedure calls. So one of the things that KeyCAD has always had an issue with is our Python scripting. It, P, people call it an API. Technically, it's not an API. It's a wrapper around the internal KeyCAD API. So anytime something internal changes in KeyCAD, we build the Python scripts, we break stuff. We are in the process now of working on an IPC interface that will act as a, as a go-between between some uh, any high-level language, including Python, and key, a running KeyCAD instance. So that so one of the things you know is you can, you can actually bring KeyCAD down with a, a, a rogue Python script. So we're going to try to fix that in 9 as best we can. And at some point in the future, the, we'll, we'll deprecate the the scripting stuff and make everything build on top of the API just to eliminate those kind of issues. And so you'll have a stable interface so when you write a Python script using the API, it's not going to break the next time you compile and rebuild KeyCAD. Um, we want to do, we, one of the things that's requested is a customizable user interface uh, including toolbar layouts. We're going to try to get that done in 9. We, there's some talk about doing a visual diff merge tool for Git. So, you, you know, you look at the difference between, you know, so you'll see the visual difference between the schematic or the board before you, like, change or merge. So you have a merge conflict with somebody else. You can look at the diff and say, oh, yeah, I want mine or I want theirs. Um, we've been getting requests for embedding licenses in project and library files, so we'll implement that. Support for barcodes, multi-user editing. Um, is something we've been discussing, uh, whether or not that happens or not. That, that's, a big, that's a big one, but it's something that we're looking at. And, of course, I talked about the pads and the GITA importers. Um, we've also been taught one of the things that people have asked us about is being able to save the old file formats. Historically, KeyCAD has not allowed that, but we're actually in the process of thinking about that. And also fo forward file compatibility. We were just open a file, an older file, or a newer file, and KeyCAD just says, well, I don't know what to do with that. So, and it just doesn't do anything with it. But if you save it, you're going to overwrite and lose your, anything that the old version of KeyCAD, you, you know, you'll still be able to open it. It's just some of the things won't be, won't work. A lot of, a lot of other uh, applications do similar things. Um, for the schematic editor, um, there's actually, there's actually a merge request now for, a tool that synchronizes sheet pins and hierarchical labels in the schematic that it references. So you can do this bi-directional updating in both directions. Um, we're going to replace the, sh so right now we allow sharing of schematics between projects. We're going to stop that and go with a re reusable design block because that particular thing causes us so much grief that we decided it wasn't smart to continue to support it. Um, uh, that that will give us the design blocks. We're going to do variants for schematics in nine. I don't know if we'll get the board variants, but at least we'll get to schematic variants. Uh, Bezier curve editing tool. People who know there's a Bezier curve support in KeyCAD, but there's no tool to edit them in KeyCAD, so we're going to do that. <clears throat> the board editor. Uh, there's also now a zone manager. That's also a merge request that's ready to go as soon as we release eight. Um, it allows you to edit all your zones in a single interface. Instead of having to open each zone individually and, and one dialog at a time, now there's a <clears throat> zone manager for all of them. Uh, Multi-channel designs, that's in progress. Uh, pad stacks, we're really hoping that one gets in because that's one of the feature parity issues that we have. Like So when we try to import from other tools that support pad stacks, we can't import them. We have to make an assumption based on a best guess and you get the pad stack that key, KeyCAD can support. So we're going to do pad stacks. Um, multi, um, guard rings, uh, that's a feature for those of you who do high impedance stuff and you want to guard your high impedance circuits so you don't have leakage currents. It's, those are useful. Right now our router doesn't really make it easy for you to design a, 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 guy, a guard ring. Um, and also we're going to do the Bezier curve editing tool in the, the board editors. <clears throat> There's a, somebody's working on a table tool right now. Um, that'll be in the schematic and maybe the board editor. Uh, I don't know whether that's actually going to happen, but hopefully it does. So it'll just be a table like any table in, a, you know, in your favorite uh, uh, document editor. They'll just be native table support. Uh, we we want to embed 3D models into the footprint so 
you don't have to have your 3D models uh, external to the board. They'll just be embedded in the board, and you take the whole board with you. You've got all your 3D models. Um, ODB++ export. This one's already also in progress. <clears throat> Our friends at Watch you Next PCB are working on that because their infrastructure uses ODB++ since they, you know, they, they, that's what they use when you order boards. Um, they prefer it over Gerber, so they're going to uh, provide ODB++ support. So if your favorite board manufacturer is a ODB++ only shop, you'll be able to export that. Okay, that's it. Um, just a quick wrap up here. I can't, I mean, I get to stand out in front of the, pro, the team as the project lead, but it's a, an incredible amount of time, and I always want to say thanks to all our developers who contribute to KeyCAD. It's, it's really gotten impressive the last, you know, the, the amount of contributions just keep going up. It's really, really uh, encouraging, and it's fun for me as a project leader to see that happen. Um, thanks to all of our sponsors and, and donors. If you've contributed to the KeyCAD donations, thank you very much. That continues the sustained growth of KeyCAD. Um, <clears throat> thank you for your continued support of the KeyCAD project. So everybody who uses KeyCAD, thanks. We, we, we really um, like, you, the, like the fact that you use KeyCAD and, and we hope you t we can continue to support your needs as a, a project. So anybody who's ever organized a, a dev room or any, anything like this knows it's not a non-trivial amount of work. Thanks to Seth for um, organizing this. Um, doesn't happen by itself. And um, hope I can. Hope I get to see everybody here next year, and I hope I get to see everybody at least at one of the key, key cons this year. So keep an eye out. There's the, the one in Europe this year is going gonna, is gonna to be in Germany. We don't have a date yet or a venue. But we have people on the ground. We we have people on the ground who are working on it. And as soon as we have that information, we'll put it up on the KeyCAD website and on the forum. And you'll you'll be able to uh, keep your eyes open. And then hopefully you guys, hopefully we can see as many of you there as as possible. Early uh, September in Bochum. <clears throat> is that when it is? Early September. Okay. And. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure we're going to have a Shenzhen, one, an Asia one this year, but I suspect we will. Is that a, is, has Hubert committed to that? We we are going to have Kikan Asia. It is just waiting for the time we coordinate with Maker Fair Shenzhen. So we're going to be on the same weekend as Maker Fair Shenzhen. So yeah, if you want to go, that's a great dual hit because the if, if you've never been to Shenzhen Maker Fair, it's really impressive. You should, should go if you get a chance. So okay, I'm open for questions. If anybody has any questions. No. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I had a question about the libraries. Um, are there plans t to move the libraries uh, in our in our? Hit deep. Po po. Are the plans to so that a project could import the libraries directly from a from Git? Yes. Uh, not right now. Uh, so the the question is 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 there are there plans to allow uh, importing library objects? Directly from a Git repo because, like, all, all our stuff is our, in a, you know, basically saved in a Git repo because we design it. So I, you can import the project libraries, it, not the globals. Yes, not the globals. Yeah. Um, so yeah, your live because the Git support obviously the libraries that are already in your project will be part of your Git project. But externally, no, we don't have anything at the moment for that. But I mean. If somebody wanted to spin up a Git plugin, that wouldn't be the no. But I wouldn't turn you. I wouldn't turn you down, because I think other people would probably like similar things. <laughs> Do you have any plans to integrate some sort of like mixed signal, uh, real-time interactive simulation into KeyCAD, kind of like multi-sim, but basically multi-sim? Uh, well, okay. There's so on the simulator front, we've had a lot of fits and starts. I, I, I wish I had like a better, a more rosy outlook to give you on that. Um, we had some people working on EM simulation, so we were going to, you know, take the board, you know, break it down into its, its, you know, three, 3D and uh, 
you know, representation and then do like EM and maybe a power solver. But the people, there's several things on that front that make it difficult. The most, the most difficult thing is finding the manpower to do that because that's pretty um, specific kind of, you, you have to have a pretty good knowledge of how to do that. The other problem that's kind of been a problematic is a lot of the libraries that do that in the open source world, because, because we are an open source project, obviously we're not going to use like math lab. Um, it, 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 they don't necessarily build well, they don't play well on all, all platforms. And so KiCad, one of, one of the, if you're not familiar with it, one of the things that KiCad will, doesn't do is make second class citizens. All, all the major platforms are considered equal. So if I can't provide a feature on Linux or on Mac OS, I'm not going to do it on Windows. It's got to work on all three. So that's kind of been a little bit of a, a little bit of, we've had a little resistance there. I, I don't think those, that problem's overcome, oh, you know, not solvable. I think it is. But the problem is, is that, so the person who's implementing that's not only got to do the EM part, like the solvers, they also got to get all the libraries to build <laughs> all the dependencies that they need to integrate in the KiCad to build on all three platforms. And that's a big, that's a, it's a little of a load. So I, I, I do think it's going to happen at some time. Obviously, it's never going to be as fast as I want it to, but I, I, we, we, do, we do have a, in our big wish list of things we want to do, it is there. It's just whether we get the manpower to do it. Any other questions? I mean, yeah. am, I, am I done? Um, one, one more. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, congratulations for all the amazing work. Uh, for Thank you. contributors and maintainers. And I want to ask about one of the planned features for, for the next release. You, you talked about Git Git Diff Merge tool. Uh, I think it would be amazing if the command line tool could export, I don't know, a GIF animation. <laughs> so you could... Export? You mean what the, you want the command line tool to export the diff? Yeah. So, like... I don't know, GIF animation, something like that. So when somebody comes with a pull request, you could see, okay, what's changing without needing to download up and uh, look. I mean, just an idea. Right? That's that. That's not a bad idea. I mean, I, I, uh, what like a ping? Open like an, an issue for it, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll see about that. Yeah. So uh, any more questions? Uh, please uh, follow. Wayne will be out in the hallway to answer any questions. So thank you once again, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you.